Stanley Cup championship drive. Words I never thought I'd say into a microphone. Words I bet John Hamm never thought would ever cross his mind, but he's joining us right now on the Rich Eisen Show. How are you, John? Never don't never don't believe. <laughs> uh, fun fact: yes. the song Gloria came out in 1982, the same year the Cardinals won the World Series. Okay. I mean, worlds are colliding, Rich. Did Laura Branigan and Whitey Herzog ever have like a Yalta-like summit, John? Do you think they they must have? I mean, it's clear. <laughs> Daryl Porter was there. <laughs> there was just a whole situation. Oh, man. Willie McGee moderated. <laughs> <laughs> you know what, man? It's amazing how things work out in the world. Um, what are you feeling right now? What's going? What's coursing through your veins, John Ham? Well, I was. Uh, I was unfortunately. I mean, look. I, I. You know, life intervenes in all of these wonderful sporting times that we have as well. But yes. Yeah. I ha- so I had to. I had to be. I was literally on set. I was shooting, and thank God I was shooting in Canada, where every Canadian person in the world was like, "Um, maybe take a minute." <laughs> <laughs> yep, I'm gonna need one. Um, and so uh, I was. Um, I, I was shooting a commercial up here for for a company called Skip the Dishes and uh, mm-hmm. Free Plug, and uh, yes. and I. Uh, I watched it and I was just like, I, my mouth was on the floor. I just, I couldn't get over it. And, you know, I, I obviously held out hope and I knew that these guys throughout the, throughout the entire finals, not, not even just the finals, throughout the playoffs have been so resilient and coming back after losses were just nuts. So I, I, I had hope. And then I, and I, when I watched the first, you know, 20 minutes, I thought, oh, we're done. Nice. Like, there's no way. <laughs> I thought, John, like, we, John, I thought the same thing, too. The Blues looked slower. They looked like they were – nothing was crisp at all. And the Bruins were just dominating. But, man, Bennington was he, – he got you through that first period. It, and then Bennington was like out of men in black. I mean, also free plug. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> He was like uh, he had two extra arms. He had like legs that had like go go gadget extensions, and he kept us in the game, which he's done for the last you know six months of the year. And he just was on another level. And you know what happened was, I think I, I'm not going to speak for the Boston crowd, but I think the same thing happened to Boston that happened to us in in games three and six. The emotion got a little over. You know, on over, over the top of those guys, and like you do, they kind of. I think they kind of gassed out. And when when we scored that first goal and the second goal in the first period, I think that that was just like a, a you know, just a, a you know, it just blew it just blew them up, and they and they had nothing left. And it was you know, it's a long series, it's a long playoffs, and I, I just I couldn't get over the fact that they came they came and they and they they closed it out in the way they did. Yeah, man. I mean, like, again, that first period, one shot on goal, 27 seconds in, and then about 15 minutes later, another shot on goal, and then the third one lights the lamp. With eight seconds to go in the period, another lit lamp, and I just was sitting there. I'm like, hockey is – what a fickle beast this sport is. Well, you can never thing, see. You know, Rask, who had, who had been lights out all series – Goes into the second period with a stat line of, of four shots against and two saves. I mean, that's that. You're right. That's just that's how hockey is. That's the craziest thing about it. And I, I, I've got I've got so much respect for that team, um, and and how how they played, especially Tuca. He he kept those guys in in the in the series in, in the same way that Bennington did, and Chara. You know he's 42 years old and he comes out and play with a broken jaw for three games. Like what a beast! But I just I, there's nothing like our team. They just would not be denied, and they had, they've been that way since January 2nd. And I think that all the credit goes to to the guys first, obviously, to Bennington, obviously for 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 sparking the team, and then to Barubi. I mean, what a what a what a story! The guys, has there been an interim coach that has won a Stanley Cup? Well, I mean, if for him to come in, and obviously he he knew Bennington from the from the minors, and and it all just you know came together from Baruby to Bingham, Bing, Bennington to the whole team. John Ham here on the Rich Eisen show. So, 
Uh, but some of the stories that leapt out at me over the last few weeks that I, I came to know and learn and really appreciate, and I know you, you've, you've met and you know Pat Maroon, who's from St. Louis. Uh, w- walk me through w- his story and people through his story and how you've gotten to, to know him or, or come across him, John. Patty Maroon, Oakville's finest. Um, he is a is a lovely guy. He is a he is a St. Louis local. Uh, the guy the guy took a you know took a a shorter deal and a lesser deal to play at home basically because he wanted to be near his kid. And I got to meet his 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 young son uh, after we we beat the Stars in Game Seven and and. Uh, uh, when uh, when Maroon scored the, the the overtime goal, the double overtime goal, and uh, you know it's 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 just a great story. The guy's a the guy's a hometown hero, and uh, you know you don't get a lot of stories like that these days. No, you don't. But uh, but Pat is uh, he's a great guy. You know his his uh, his 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 kid's a, a little cutie. He had a, he had a jean jacket on that said Little Rig. <laughs> which is pretty cool. I mean, I would love it. I mean, the, the whole thing. Did did you did you get to meet Layla? Um, the uh, yes, the, I did. You know, I, I I'm sure you knew she she made it to Boston yesterday. She well, was yeah, there. I saw, I saw her with the cup. Yeah, um, amazing. I got to meet her after Game Four when when we won in St. Louis, and um, uh, you know, her story is obviously just as impressive as anything and and the the boys when they when she came down to the locker room to say hi and and they they're all just they're so sweet to her and you know that's so inspiring to them obviously for 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 obvious reasons i mean this this is a this is a little kid and she's fighting off you know the fight of her life and uh and and so it's one of those deals, and they they all they'll all say it. They're just like, "Hey, if you can do a weekend," and uh, you know, it's cheesy and it's and it's and it's uh, corny, but man, it's it's real, and that that's um, that's the kind of thing that that St. Louis rallies around, and it's uh, it's it's honestly it's sweet. And when I saw that little girl, you know, uh, uh, hoisting you know hoisting the cup with with Pareko there, it was it was you know it was emotional. Yeah, it is. It, it it really is. John Hamm here uh, on the Rich Eyes Show. A couple more minutes left with with uh, with him. So again, walk me through. So you're on set, just peek peeking. <laughs> so I'm in, in my uh, trailer. Yeah. Okay. So, all right. Here's the deal. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll I'll paint it for you. Please. I'm shooting this commercial. The game starts, and I'm like, please, nobody talk to me. I don't want to <laughs> hear it. I don't want to like. Just let me walk. <laughs> let me do my thing. Yes. And and I'm walking around and I'm they have it, I got it in my trailer, and I'm watching the game and I watch the first period and I'm like this is, this is not trending well we're not uh, this is not happening, I don't know what to say, uh, so I go and I we shoot a couple takes of a thing and then they're 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 moving cameras and they're resetting and they're doing their deal, okay okay so uh, I'm sitting there they're lighting and I'm sitting there and the first AD goes uh, good news. I said, okay, good news. I like good news. He goes, 1-0. I said, okay, good news. That's good news. Good news. And literally three minutes later, he's like, good news. (laughs) Okay. What's that? He goes, 2-0. I went, oh, God. So now I'm like, okay, since I've not been watching, they scored two goals. So now should I not watch the rest of the game? I don't know what to do. I'm freaking out. So basically, I missed most of the second period because I had to shoot. And then at a certain point, uh, they come in and say, uh, the, the first AD goes, he didn't even say anything. He just puts three fingers up. And I'm like, oh, my God, you got to be kidding me. And before I know it, he puts four fingers up. And I'm like, okay, well, I have to walk off the stage right now at this point. <laughs> and I go back to my trailer. And I watch the last five minutes. And I, I'm, I'm just losing my mind. And so uh, then the texts start rolling in. I get about... 250 texts from people around the country, friends and, and people I've worked with and people from Boston and everything. The, and, and the best ones, I'll be honest, were, were for my friends from, you know, from growing up and all that stuff. But, the, but a close second was the salty Boston texts that were rolling in uh, from people like Bill Simmons and, and the like, who, who couldn't quite, couldn't quite get their head around the fact that we won, but 
had to deal with it anyway. John, how many yachts can they water ski behind? This is the St. Exactly. Louis freaking blues. You've, exactly. been, you've been waiting half a century. I mean, come on. I'll be honest. When I saw the thing that Dennis Leary did, that was their like hype video where it's like, it's been four months since I've had a parade. I went, you know, I don't think that's the right attitude to hit. <laughs> and I just love it. It's just, you know, that's the fan sort of mentality, John. That's why you are as pure as the driven snow, is that when you are rooting so hard and you have to step away, you're not watching, and then your team succeeds, you have to sit there and think, is it you? Is it you? <laughs> Should you well, listen, not watch now, even though it's the most say, important game? I will say this about that, too, because, you know, there was apparently, because I'm not on Twitter or any social media or anything, there mm-hmm. was apparently a very, I think they call it a tweet storm that the kids call it. <laughs> uh, when I showed up at, uh, at game six, sans beard, mm. where everyone said, uh, oh, well, you've ruined it. You've cursed the team. You've, you've this, you've that. I, and I had to remind <laughs> My my friends, I was like, you know, I'm not on the team. <laughs> I am of the team. And when when uh, when Tom Cruise and the good people of Top Gun say we need you to shoot, there are no Stanley Cup beards allowed. So mm. it was uh, it was very funny that people uh, kind of lost their minds about that. And the, uh, so the, the, I'm, I'm I'm also perfectly glad. That we um, that we ended up winning, but uh, you know it's it's so funny how people get wound up about stuff, and uh, oh, I just I can't get my head around it right now. I'm still I'm still losing my mind. So the the reason why you shaved is for Tom Cruise. Is that what you're saying, John? Did I just pick yes, that I up? Am. Yes, it's uh, for Top Gun. Ah, okay. So now everybody just back off. You had to do it for for Cruise, and your team won. So everybody just back off on the tweet storming. Right, John? Right. Okay. So, so calm, calm down with the, with the storming of the tweeting. Oh, man. That's so a good thing there, right? If it's feasible, would you go to the parade? Have you already looked and seen if this is a possibility for you to go? I have booked my, tic- I have booked my tickets. I will be going. I will be yelling. I will be cheering. Uh, there will be hugging. There will be high-fiving. There will be uh, so many celebratory actions and moments that I don't think I can catalog all of them. But that means, unfortunately, I think, Richard. Yes, sir. That I will miss your, that I will miss your birthday party. Oh, Jonathan, that's just fine. It's all good, John. You know what, if there's man? A reason, if there's a good reason to miss somebody's <laughs> birthday, <laughs> this is it. I will accept that as long as you get to drink from the cup, John. That's what you must do. Have one I of those... Say- have one of those guys tip it photo. for you. Please do. Have one of those guys tip it for you. Put your favorite... Whatever you want in there and just enjoy it. Drink sip from the cup, John Ham. Congrats. Richard, you're the best. You are too, Happy sir. Happy birthday. Thanks, bud. Let's Appreciate go, it. Blues. Play Gloria. <laughs> there it is. To play them out. We'll do it live. Perfect. <laughs> do it live. John Ham here on the Rich Eisen Show. For more of the Rich Eisen Show, tune to Audience Channel 239 on DirecTV for free on BR Live or download the Rich Eisen Show app.